Buckingham Palace, located in the city of Westminster, has been the official London residence of the royal monarchy since 1837. Today, the palace building is a whopping 830,000 square feet, having a total of 775 rooms, including 19 staterooms, 52 bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices, and 78 bathrooms. It is guarded by five regiments of foot soldiers, including the famous Bobbies. Some of the most notable rooms include the King's Library, the Throne Room, Ballroom, Center Room, the Drawing Rooms, the Grand Staircase, and the Picture Gallery. But first, let's talk about the history of the palace. The land the palace is now on was originally owned by King James I as the Royal Gardens of Sorts, but was later sold to the Duke of Buckingham, who the palace was obviously named after. In 1705, the Duke built a house for he and his wife to live in. In 1761, King George III bought the house off the Duke, planning to live there with his life, wife, Charlotte. Once they moved in, the palace became known as the Queen's House. He added four libraries to the house. After King George III's death in 1820, his son, George IV, inherited the throne. He decided to have the house renovated and made into the official royal residence. He hired John Nash to do the renovations, who made it into a U-shaped building. But in 1830, King George IV died before renovations were completed, and his successor, who was his brother William IV, did not want to live in the palace. However, Parliament voted in 1833 to complete the renovations and furnishing of the palace anyway, and after the death of William IV in 1837, his successor Queen Victoria became the first official monarch to live in Buckingham Palace. Shortly after moving in, Queen Victoria once again decided the palace needed renovation, for the purpose of adding more room to entertain guests. She hired Edward Blord for the task, who has most notably made the ballrooms, balcony, and staterooms. He had another wing, making the U-shaped building into a square, with a courtyard in the middle. The renovations took from 1845 to 1853, but Queen Victoria's son, Edward VII is credited with the interior design of the palace, who added a lot of gold color scheme used throughout the palace. The palace has gone under much construction since then, but the palace is still much the same as it was when Queen Victoria lived there. Now that you know the history of the palace, let's take a look at some of the specific areas of the giant building. The parts we will go through are the east side, right here, and we'll go through the courtyard into the grand entrance, right here. Then to the left is the grand staircase, which leads to the green drawing room, and then to the throne room, and then it will end with the picture gallery. In the front of the grounds on the east side, where the tourists usually gather, is the Victorian mon Monument. Then behind that is the actual palace, where you can see the balcony, which the monarchs use to greet their subjects. On the top of the palace, if you see a flag flying, which is called the Queen's Standard, that means the Queen is home. A few archways in the front lead into the courtyard, also called the Quadrangle. Then you would go into a room called the Grand Entrance. Nash designed this room to give the visitor a sense of how amazing the Grand Palace is, hence the name. The red carpet and the gold trim on the walls that Edward VII added throughout the palace definitely give it that feel. If you are just head just straight out to, of this room, it would take you to the Marble Hall, then to the Bow Room. This is how people get to the Queen's Garden Parties. The gardens of Buckingham Palace cover an impressive 39 acres and contain more than 350 types of wild flowers and a three-acre lake. The Royal Muse is also on the pounce ground, which is where they keep their horses. If you were to take a left south to the room of the Grand Entrance, it would take you to the Grand Staircase. The Grand Staircase is one of Nash's biggest contributions to the palace. Light enters the room through a big glass dome on the ceiling, and the walls, which is kind of hard to tell from the picture, but they are Renaissance inspired. But of course, the most eye-catching thing in the room is the Golden Staircase, which leads into the Green Drawing Room. The green drawing room, which is the waiting room to enter the throne room, of course, has green walls, which have golden brackets on it, and the furniture in the room was brought there by King George IV from Windsor Castle. After leaving this room, the guests would enter the throne room, which has a stunning red color, where at the end of the room you see the two thrones, which are actually called the chairs of estate. 
You can also see the chandeliers, which you may have noticed Nash has put into several of the other rooms as well. The fireplace in the throne room was designed by John Nash. The intricate designs are supposed to represent military victory. The clock on top of it was made in Paris in 1809, which sticks with the fireplace theme of military victory. There are actually 350 clocks in the palace, and two people are in charge of making sure they are all on the correct time. Their nicknames are Tick and Talk. If you head through a door on the west side of the throne room, it takes you to the picture gallery, which is the last room I will talk about. As with most of the west wing, which we have discussed, the room was designed by John Nash, but the ceiling did have to be changed from its original design due to a leaking issues. Buckingham Palace is home to tons of amazing historical artwork, several hanging in this room. In the Royal Collection, there are several Dutch, Italian, Flemish paintings, including some 17th century Baroque paintings. One painting that hangs there is Athene by Permarugino. The beauty of the woman is very obvious, with her perfect lips, elongated nose and fingers, which point to her breastplate, which has victory flying over Athens, and is inscribed with word Athene, who is the goddess in the painting. He uses shadows and value in the painting to make her expression very enigmatic looking, making it and her breastplate the clear focal point. There are tons of exhibits and rooms in Buckingham Palace, way too much to go over in five minutes, but hopefully you can see the historical value of the palace and the wonderful designs and thought that went into building it. The palace is truly a fitting symbol for the royal monarchy. Here are the sources I used if you are interested in any further reading. Thank you.